scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Thou was perfect in thy ways in the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee. We are reading to 19. By the multitudes of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of the Lord. Remember Psalm 24, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. So we now see that Satan was a cherub that covereth in the midst of the stones of fire there's no mention of the king of tyre being in the midst of the stones of fire he would not even survive it 17. okay he said thy heart was lifted up because of your beauty aha uh -huh. the bible is now putting perspective we need to examine why satan would rebel from a place like heaven thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty Thou hast corrupted, and then he said, Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Take note of the things that can corrupt people. Beauty, wisdom. He said, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. 18. Halash kanabata. Thou hast defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Last verse. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be any more. Prophetic parallels. Are you seeing now? Because the king that this judgment was upon later died. But Satan is still existing. So that's why I told you, you see prophetic parallels. There are things that could not have been the king. And there are things that could not have been Satan. Are you learning? So we know that Satan was a created being. According to scripture, that he was Lucifer. One of the cherubs in heaven. That was made according to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. By God and for his glory but then the bible tells us that something happened revelations 12 tells us there was war in heaven please look up what did satan really want that is really what i want to help us and then we'll pray at least it is enough for us to know that he was created by god no matter what he is and no matter how long he existed we know that he is god's creation but what made satan Listen carefully. What made Satan to rebel against God? And what makes Satan to still hate men today? We need to examine this. What is he looking for? To answer this question, in truth, if I'm to do justice to this question, there are two schools of thought, and all of them are worth considering. I will give it to you, and then we'll discuss. Number one, the first school of thought is believed that Satan from Ezekiel 28 
that satan wanted to run a parallel government he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god i will be like the most high there was an obsession by reason of his beauty the bible says his beauty and his excellence and his wisdom flattered him that is also proven through his manipulation over earthly kings we see nebuchadnezzar also that these kings can be carried away by their beauty and their splendor and they will want to be god and we see that the same kind of judgment that was meted on satan was meted on nebuchadnezzar from a cherub he was thrown down to become nothing nebuchadnezzar from a, an exalted king he was thrown down to become an animal are we together now you can see those parallels so the first school of thought agrees that satan fell because of that desire i don't believe satan wanted to overthrow god he is it's clear that he can't do that but i i know that satan wanted to run a parallel government so that you can choose the option of god or him it is still the character of satan till today every time satan studies what god is doing he tries to create an alternative system to it are we together now now the second school of thought which is equally worth considering is the timing of revelation chapter 12 and verse 7 gives us a very serious picture it says that satan was cast to the earth and that means that means that the earth was already there and if the earth is already there then it also goes to tell us um now look up please <laughs> where do you think satan got the idea that he can be like god because that idea must have come from somewhere all things consist in god that means you don't have any wisdom outsourced from outside of God. So where would it, where, where do you think Satan would have gotten the idea that it is possible for man to be like God? Now, the second school of thought argue that Satan fell after man was created. Personally, I don't agree with that, but I'm going to teach you what I believe. Are we together? Just to honor those schools of thought. It is believed that when God made man and Satan saw the potential that man had now become in the image of God no creature was ever made in the image of God they were made in the likeness of God that jealousy are you seeing that that desire to be jealous and you see you can see that character consistent with the operation of satan too that every time something new comes that surpasses the old the old fights it you see jacob and esau you see ishmael you see abraham is that true you see all of these parallels that satan saw that man was created now in the image and the likeness of god now i do not believe that for many reasons um number one because according to genesis chapter 1 and verse 31 that is the scripture that i use for my basis to argue away that the bible says and god saw that everything that he had made was good so it would not be possible for god to call everything good when satan are, are you getting the idea now yes everything he had made was good and the evening and the morning came look up please i hope you realize that in the making of man genesis chapter one and genesis chapter two oh dear i wish we have the time there are there are two different contexts of discussions apart now i don't want to confuse you because many people just read their bible from one and two you will see that in the making of man it was creation in genesis chapter 2 it is the formation of man when god blessed man in genesis chapter 2 it was adam man like the spirit of man the woman was in the man when he gave the dominion mandate that is why today in manifesting dominion there is no gender the moment you are in christ you can manifest that dominion because the woman came out of man in chapter 2 when that formation happened it was simply based on the structure 
of family and God's organogram that the woman comes under the man. But as far as dominion over systems from a spiritual angle, the woman has the same ranking. There is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is one new man in Christ. Jesus came to restore that. Are we together? So, the school of thought that says that um, Satan, Satan did not fall um, he fell after man if you believe that that satan fell after man simply because he peeped into the making of man in the image of god and then jealousy came there are many other scriptures that don't agree with that are we together number one genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 theologically speaking we call it the gap theory and we know that the judgment in genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of Lucifer. No other being was judged to have produced that kind of chaos. Every judgment that is recorded in scripture as we see had Lucifer behind it. From Genesis 1 verse 1, then Noah to every other judgment that has happened to the final judgment that will condemn all men who have refused Jesus Christ. Satan has always been behind it. But this is what I believe based on scripture. Listen very carefully. Let me establish my thoughts on this now. <laughs> Romans chapter 8 from verse 29. What does Satan really want? For whom he did foreknow, he, did, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren verse 30 moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified please look up i believe and this is based on this scripture the Bible tells us the entire agenda of man was not one that was being executed real time. It was predestined. There was a foreknowledge. And do not forget the office of Satan. Satan was the light bearer, the custodian of the wisdom and the mysteries of God. To be predestined and foreordained means there was a time that God designed that, that he was going to create a being in his image and in his likeness and satan must have had access to that information based on his office this is what gave him an idea that so god can actually create another species in his image and his likeness and so that began to challenge him to want to work with that reason i will be like the mosai if that is the case are we together now yes based on scripture if it is true that man was predestined the whole agenda it was never something that was just executed god scratched his head the bible says this thing was organized watch this we have a government structure in nigeria and in many parts of africa and there are times where when the government wants to do certain things there is a group of intel the dss and the intelligence unit is that true by reason of their office no matter how private and personal what it is the president wants to do or what it is that the executive cabinet want to do by the reason of their office they have to be initiated into this nitty-gritty am i right on that this is government now if there is a traitor among them he can take advantage of that access of his office we have seen it happen across governments. Is that true? This is what I believe happened. That there has been a discussion. Let us make man, listen carefully. I do not believe let us make man was an idea that just came after he made the trees and the rest no no the bible is just telling you that there was in god's mind this idea it's not just that it was in in verse 26 that the idea just came no let us make man was the motivation behind the recreation of the earth again because the earth was recreated for the sake of man are, are we learning now 
so because of satan's office as the light bearer the cherub that covereth he's had access to some of these things and the bible says with that he began to nurse that idea in his heart you see the same attitude scattered all through scripture that a man's enemies will have to be members of his own household the one that was used to throw jesus down because you see you can study satan by the consistency of his patterns it was judas that gave jesus away because of jesus had moments when he would talk with them and tell them about establishing an earthly kingdom and about all of these things and it was on the strength of that information judas could liaise with other people to say do you know what let's kill this man he's going to overthrow you they believed he was talking about a physical government so when they finished their meeting judas was looking at a way of making money from it the same character of the antichrist don't forget the Bible says Satan entered Judas. If he entered G Judas, Judas will be a continuation of his original desire. The light bearer, having the idea that the plan of man, not necessarily redemption, the plan of man, now to be created in the image and the likeness of God, that gave him an opportunity and that idea because of access you see the reason why God judged him and you see the reason why Satan cannot be forgiven because of the kind of access that he had. He was, the, his very name, Lucifer, meant the light bearer. He was the custodian of the wisdom of God. Are we together? Watch this. The Holy Spirit can minister to me today by reason of my oneness with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can speak to me. Look up, please. And he can tell me that this man is going to be a billionaire next week. Now I have that information. What I do with that information is now up to me. I can use that information to manipulate this man now. Do we agree on that? Now, my corruption, you see that, it will earn me a punishment because I have now betrayed the trust that he gave me but i am now privy before it happens to this man i can announce it and tell him sir in two weeks you are going to be a billionaire and truly it will happen like that because i have been granted access are you getting what i'm telling you now yes before it will happen in the earth it happens in the heavens is that true this is what convinces me that lucifer had access to parts of the plan of God for man and when he found out that the image of God is going to be invested to another creature that is not him nor any being in heaven listen you need to know why Satan hates you I'm tracing a story for you the greatest desire of Satan did not come to him let me prove it to you again by prophetic adumbration look at Haman and Mordecai when the king said who shall we honor you see the same manifestation of the spirit of the antichrist because a man had access to the king he knew that the king wanted to lift somebody and he said to himself who else you see the parallel of this character across systems who else will the king honor and he gave a very elaborate strategy for honor and he said sorry you are not the one go and do the rest do it for ordinary mordecai who is staying at the city gate and carry you are the one who will push the donkey and say bow the knee that was an insult to mordecai and mordecai went and reported to his wife and the wife said sorry who is this man you are trying to fight he says a jew he said you are finished that means there is a covenant that has given this man an advantage are you learning scripture now yes everywhere you see the spirit of the antichrist there you see that there is always betrayal and you see that there is always treason hmm. satan being the light bearer granted him access to certain secrets of the lord the bible is very clear as to the fact that god can trust men with secrets he can trust men 
with truths are you learning satan's arch enemy listen carefully is not god god is his creator and even in his fallen state you will acknowledge god satan's arch enemy is man now let me wrap up as we pray what does satan really want what has been his drive for all these probably millions of years and he's not rested why does satan want your family listen carefully why does satan want your health why is he afflicting you with sickness why does satan want to destroy the ministry the man of god why is he destroying your business it's an old story and if you do not know what is satan's motivation you will be shadow boxing around issues not knowing that the issues predate you there are two things that satan is looking for and this is the basis for the entire study of demonology and deliverance two things number one dominion number two transgenerational allegiance this is all satan is looking for his obsession for dominion and number two his obsession for transgenerational allegiance this is what birthed the concept of witchcraft altars patterns everything you see today that destroys people destroys family is a structure driving that goal dominion and allegiance two scriptures and we'll begin to pray matthew chapter 4 satan's obsession for dominion and satan's obsession for allegiance was demonstrated in the very temptation of satan with jesus please look up are we bible students then was jesus led up out of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of who the devil now um let's go to verse 8 verse 8 quickly please verse 8 again this was the third temptation the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain what did the devil show him the all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them say dominion scripture is revealing to us now satan's obsession he said all these things i will give thee please go back to verse yes and the glories of them now verse 9 all these things i will give you if you will do what and dominion and allegiance that's it satan can suddenly become a giver if you satisfy that condition that means i don't need this keep that scripture please verse 9 i don't need the money look up please believers i don't need your health i don't need your political position i don't need your prosperity i don't need your ministry i don't need longevity in your family it's none of my business there is one thing i need i need you to fall down and worship nebuchadnezzar when you hear the sound of the trumpet and everything fall down and worship the image of the beast fall down and worship how could a man be so driven by this agenda can i tell you this you can easily know who is under the influence of satan by their obsession for these two things their obsession for control not just dominion control and their obsession for human worship is a classic character of satan this is all that satan looks for please listen to me and do you know what satan hates you today because of one thing god gave you that image and he declared that dominion mandate and compelled creation to answer you now you have become the arch enemy of satan look up please if satan if god suddenly removes his image from man and give it to stones you will beg satan you will not get his attention he will not need you again because it's not you he's looking for what is man that thou art mindful of psalm 8 let's wrap up psalm 8 verse 1 oh lord our lord how excellent is thy name in all the earth 
who has said thy glory help those under the anointing we're about to pray i sense a very strong anointing here verse 2 he says out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou has ordained strength because of thy enemies that, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger now his contemplations verse 3 when i consider the heavens the work of thy fingers the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained verse 4 what is man what is the psalmist had to sit down and wonder lord what is man that you did not couldn't you have just used satan couldn't you have just used the archangels you left all of them and you came to bring another humanoid species what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 for you have made him a little lower than angels the word there is elohim not angelio elohim you have made him a little lower than yourself in ranking you have crowned him with glory and honor verse 6 thou hast made him to have over what the works of thy hands and you have put all things all things hold on he didn't say all things on earth no all things all things aside from yourself it was adumbrated in the honor of joseph he said joseph i now promote you in everything will be under you it is only on the throne you will be above me this is what was given to him that was what the devil was fighting so that journey from his brothers to potiphar's wife to everything was fighting that position is the same thing that happened to esther the same thing that happened to mordecai these are all adumbrations of what god did to man thou hast made him to have dominion over all the works of your hands you have put all things under his feet verse 7 okay so you, you that, let's just leave verse 6 when you go back and see what paul speaks to the hebrew churches he says in doing so you did not leave anything that was under his feet you find that in hebrews chapter 2 that you did not leave anything out that was not under his feet can i tell you this please look up man not god is satan's arch enemy believing that god is satan's arch enemy is an insult no because even when they were fighting for the body of moses you see that now you see how powerful this ranking is because as at the time satan was fighting with michael over the body of moses satan was fighting as the prince of this world he had collected that authority and michael had to respect him so he could not say i rebuke you he said the lord the authority that is higher than man the only authority higher than man i use that authority to rebuke you because if satan had told if if michael had told satan i rebuke you it would be a compromise of the order when god exalted man he was exalted even above the cherubs above every other thing the lord said to my lord sit thou at my right hand where are you seated far above thrones dominions every name that is named listen please hear me you have to understand and believe what i'm teaching you it's not about the all time your village your grandfather was an innocent man who did he just entered the middle of an old story so satan created systems to make sure there is transgenerational allegiance they will stop rain and punish men who do not know neither will they understand so they will go to satan and say let rain come and let our children eat say here is the agreement i will send the rain remember he's a giver suddenly if he will get dominion and allegiance so the fathers on behalf of the land who say satan hunger is killing us through those mediums we will serve you they call him different names but he's the same person okay we will give you a deity worship this deity and the fathers came grandfathers will worship the deity and for as long as they worship the deity 
he will use the authority of man to bring rain the authority of man is what satan uses to bring rain listen carefully when people are sick when he finds out that people are not that allegiance is compromising there will be a widespread problem within the land and the elders will run back and the, the priest or whatever medium can say i'm hungry you who are eating i've not eaten what do you want sir make sure your children come and worship me and you innocently they give birth to you you are shouting before you even know left and right they made incisions on your body and made covenants and satan says that's right and then now you just stand before jesus and say i receive you as my lord and satan says what did you say do you know what that means that means you are saying from me oh, everything that comes from me will no longer serve you and satan says you have drawn the line everything that is a threat to his allegiance he will fight it through men he will fight it through systems can i tell you this every please look up do you believe what i've taught you so far whether you are yoruba whether you are Igbo, whether you are south south whether you are the caribbeans you are northern you are spanish i don't care what region this story has brought all of us into one singular basket this is what satan wants he showed us what he wants and dead jesus don't think he'll be afraid of you he said jesus there is no need to go through all this rigor just bow let me tell you something happens to satan when you worship are you seeing what happens when you worship are you seeing why worship is powerful so he looks at you going down to your knees and says for who now and you begin to call his name jesus and he will say you know what afflict this man in a way that will make jesus not look like savior and when the affliction gets too much somebody will tell you there's somebody in the village and you will go and sit down and say i knew he was going to come hear me i'm teaching you what i'm teaching you because truly your freedom has come can i tell you this this is why songs that talk about surrender are so powerful because in doing that it is like it's the it's, it's a new salt satan says for millions of years can i tell you this do you know satan actually believes that the day is going to come when he will compel the entire creation to come under his lordship he really does it is only you who does not believe it satan is firing on all four cylinders he still believes he believes that all your family will serve him forget that you are so when he sees you listen every battle that you read in this bible came as a result of satan's perceiving it as a threat to his agenda when he killed children it was not about children he perceived they were saviors in the children when satan causes barrenness today satan does not need children satan he he can peep through the window of prophecy and hear when the holy spirit is speaking to you and say madam a prophet is going to come through your womb and he knows that that prophet will break a 150 year old idol practice he will bring the barrenness of zechariah and elizabeth was not about barrenness it was about john who will ordain jesus who will save the world please look at me god is giving us intelligence apostle i am a sincere person i don't steal i don't kill yet there is an attack on my business let me tell you interpret it now from the lens of who satan is interpret everything that happens in your life from the lens of who satan is 
not the lens of the village you are coming from that's too small not the lens of the mean it's not about you and your boss from a bigger picture your boss has no business with that he's only an available vessel everything satan will use to frustrate you until he brings you to a point of dominion and transgenerational allegiance I know this what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world Satan can give you the whole world but he needs something your soul I'm not wasting your time I apologize I know our time is gone we're going to pray but please hear me now you can go back home and know that it's not about the problem that happened in your family it's not about what happened with your grandfather at all it's not even about what is happening between your father and your mother it's not about what is happening with your education satan does not need visas no it's not about your finances he has seen that your finances will do something that would threaten that agenda he will attach it with everything he has please look up my dear one it is not about marriage and children it is because he has seen that in it satan does not attack anything for itself he verifies is there a component in your lifting oh so you now become governor or you become head of parliament and in it many people will receive scholarships to go to good schools and there is a chapel there they will hear a man of god they will be filled with the holy spirit you will not win that election he will fight you what does satan want i will be like the most high i desire it everywhere you see satan he's obsessed with his image being erected and men bowing to the image he does not want animals when he came upon nebuchadnezzar he said let a 90 feet stature be built ah! but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are thrones there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are thrones, there are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and sober be vigilant for your adversary the devil like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour he said do not let satan take an advantage of you for we are not ignorant that there is an agenda when that agenda was in place your village was not even your village your nation was not even your nation there is an old story about an old serpent an old agenda but only a shoe will reign forever to your kingdom there'll be no end only a shoe will reign forever hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins 
incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.